the show starts with like a really kind of colorful explosion of works. So we started the exhibition like that, but we also had in mind that we wanted pauses, pauses meaning, you know, a place where you get a different feeling from the work. So the all wood sculpture gallery is one of those places. I mean, in general, I try to make, you know, when, even when I started making toys, I was thinking like, oh, if I'm making a toy, I don't want to make this like pr like superhero -y proud thing. I want to make a sort of things with, with a human emotions to it. So yeah, I'm constantly, you know, I mean, these sculptures for me are just sort of current mood. So I like that about it. I mean, I grew up, you know, you grow up having these wood toys that you can put on a shelf and have in your hand. And then suddenly there's this thing that can just grab you. I think that Part of the emotional impact or the mood of the work is created through scale. If you'll notice as you walk through the exhibition, everything is either larger than life or smaller than life. Nothing is really exactly life size. So I think somehow there's a magic there that really impacts how we, as we walk through the exhibition, read the works. So this is sort of like when I stopped using spray paint and what I would do is I would paint these in my apartment. I'd go and take a lot of them from a neighborhood that I knew I didn't want to put things in. You know, my studio would be stacked with, with pieces. And then I would just go out and I would change them during the day. I would, you know, with the bus shelters, the, the hinges are on the top, you'd have to have this, this giant thing. And in, in the 90s, there wasn't really a frenzy of street art. It wasn't, you know, people wouldn't be trying to take pictures. They, would, they just thought you're a worker. So you can, you can just walk around in the daytime and do all this stuff. Often graffiti, philosophically, is about bucking the system. So to have it come into the institution is, you know, there's, there's just like, there's, there's a schism there. I don't, you know, it was always about communication. It was about like getting my, like, I, you know, as when you're young, you don't sort of, it's not like you, you can see a map of like, this is how to get your work out to the world. So you just, you know, for me, I felt like that was the one opportunity where there's no red tape. I can, it's, it's just as whatever energy I have, I can put it out into the street. The mural is something that Kaz and I discussed him doing here um, as a very special moment within the exhibition. You have to be here to see it exactly as it is. It will never be this way again. And when this exhibition closes, the wall will be painted white again. So the mural will live on only in photographs. You know, it, it's funny, for me, I don't think twice about it. It's kind of like my whole, the whole sort of first 10 somewhat years of making work, I just made it knowing it was gonna, it was ephemeral and it would get gone over. And just all the stuff you do on the street, you, you hope that it lasts long enough to get the photo that night or the next morning. So I don't, it doesn't bother me one bit that it's gonna get painted over. For him, just getting his imagery out there, no matter the vehicle, was, I guess, the overall idea. He began to build his artistic vocabulary as a graffiti artist. He still uses many of those same motifs, like double X's for eyes and cartoon bulbous skull and crossbones for heads. So for him, all of this is, you know, graffiti to toys and products to being in the institution are all a progression of his artistic vocabulary, things that he began to build on early on in his career and still uses today.